Let me tell you a story. In the 60s, Kenzo Takada traveled from Tokyo to Paris. He wanted to experience that bohemian Parisian lifestyle, that um, the fashion at its, its, its home. But he didn't quite expect it, his um, excitement that he felt when he traveled by boat from Tokyo to Paris, and he had the chance to visit different villages from Asia, from India, from Africa. He was thrilled, he was excited, because in that moment, he saw how diverse we are as people, as cultures, and when he arrived in Paris, he put it on practice. And if you search on the internet, the first collection realized by Kenzo, you will see that he um, gave that uh, energy of diversity, that colorful uh, dynamic of um, the world. Now, I want you to imagine his experience and think about your own experiences. How often you have the chance to go in a city, in a big city, and feel that energy of diversity, to see people that are from different countries, from different cultures, with different religion, and you can see it on their clothes. Unfortunately, today we dress kind of similar, we dress in the same manner, and whose fault is it? Maybe when you are reading the topic of my presentation, um, you are thinking, why should I care? I am here to find solutions for sustainability, to protect my environment. But in my opinion, the pollution, the uh, exploitation, the animal fabrics are just the tip of the iceberg of this industry. There is a deeper issue, and it is called uh, cultural identity. I think it is important because the cultural identity in clothes and garments, no one, it, 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 you, we don't have a law for it. You are not punished if you do not uh, respect your cultural identity. It is your choice, and that's why I think it is important. When I was researching this issue, I was wondering, whose fault is it? I mean, are the consumers, are the producers, is the mass market guilty? I don't think it's that simple to divide the world in bad and good and the ones who are doing something positive and the others who are doing something negative. I think it's more complex than this. And before starting, I want you to understand what cultural identity is. Of course, I can bore you right now with definitions from dictionaries, but it's pretty early, so I would like to explain through an example. Imagine you are in the same big city and you are walking down the street and in that crowd you see a person who stands out. You see someone who is dressed differently than you and you are curious. You want to know her or him because when you are dressed differently, maybe you are thinking in a different manner. Maybe you have different values and you are curious. But when you walk through people that are dressed in the same manner as you, you are just indifferent to the others. So the problem, whose fault is it? I'll give you an example for, that actually was a few years ago quite a scandal in our country. I'm talking about the resort collection of Tory Birch from 2018. The problem with this, I don't know if you are familiar with it, that, but the problem was that Tory Birch copied that uh, Romanian traditional coat. Uh, the Tory Birch uh, is um, above and below is the coat, Romanian coat, and she didn't give any credit. The Romanians were pretty upset because she didn't mention us and after a couple of weeks she decided to give credit to the Romanian people and give up to the product. But my problem is not that, not that she was inspired, not that she didn't give us credit. I think it's a, her choice to take inspiration from a place, but I think it's not right to copy something, especially from another culture. Why? Because you are a fashion designer, you have a responsibility. Why would you expect the mass market not to copy th things from other designers when you are doing the same thing? You should set a positive example. And when from a big name it, it arises an issue like this, what can you expect? So whose fault is it? Is there? Um, I'm a part of a brand with over 10 years of experience. And I think sometimes we 
subestimate our customers. We think that, oh, this is fashionable now, I should create something similar, because anyway, it is an industry and I want to sell things. But I don't think it is quite true, because customers are more open-minded than um, we think. They want new things, and this thing with culture identity, we, they unconsciously want it. You, all of you want to stand out in the crowd. All of you want to express your identity and your heritage, even if you don't realize it. And how can you do this? I'll show you this scarf. This is a scarf from Andrea Tinku, the brand I'm representing here. And um, it was inspired by the um, in traditional Romanian costume. It was not copied, it was just inspired. I can tell you, from all of our clothes and accessories, this is by far on the top of the sales. Why? Because people want this. People want to wear something that is representative for their culture, that means something more than uh, a piece of clothing that you put it on the morning and that's it. You want to say something about you. And this is the Romanian lark. And you can see, it, is, it was not presented like a traditional garment by us. Uh, we didn't want just to reproduce a scarf or a Romanian blouse and put it there and say, oh, we took inspiration from our culture. No, we, our designer rethink it, reconsidering it, and arrived to a new form, to a contemporary form, as you can see. Now you may wonder, why should I want to do this? I want innovation, I want new shapes, I want to find new directions of thinking. Why should I go back to my tradition and heritage? Because there lies your development, your, your progress. In this moment, if you ask me, fashion is a bit stuck um, in the sense of sources of inspiration, of shapes, we need new things. And I think that we can find these new things in the old shapes, in uh, the tradition, in the culture identity, and bring back that thing that is specific to each of us as uh, individuals that are part of a certain culture. Um, in other words, you need to go a few steps back in order to look forward and rethink everything. And you cannot blame the customers that they are not aware that they don't want to buy from you because they want a cheaper alternative. The problem is that maybe we do not offer them a better alternative. If you have a, a t-shirt, a plain t-shirt, and you sell it uh, with a higher price than Zara did, even if your materials are good quality, you are working with people well paid, the people will go to Zara. Because you are not offering them something that they strive, something that is special, unique, and personal. We need to bring back that personal aspect of fashion, that indiv individuality of garment. I want you, after this presentation, brief presentation is over, I want you to think about it. But really think about it. When you create your next collection, when you are working with the next team of designers, I want you to think about this issue, to think about how do I impact? How, what is my impact in the society? How do I represent my people through my clothes? Because my name is linked to a country and I should, I'm supposed to represent it. And after you realize that new collection, that new concept, think about the implication, the long-term implications. Because yeah, you create the clothes for this season and you sell it in this season, and people will buy it, but you are building, in fact, things for the next generation. And the world that we are, all of us, are creating today, right here, is the world in which your children and grandchildren will be living in. Thank you so much.